Hi, everyone. It has taken us a long time to get to this topic, but that's because you have to know how to weight paint before you can move meshes around on the body. But now that you've mastered the basics of weight painting, you are unstoppable. Here are the things we're going to do in this video. In theory, moving meshes around is very easy. We can use the transform tool or the menus when you right click on a mesh to move shapes around however we want. What makes the process more or less difficult depends on the mesh and on what you are trying to do. As I mentioned, it's easy in theory to move things around, but some meshes may give you more trouble than others. If you are just mirroring a mesh to exactly the same place, but on the other side of the body, this is very easy. Please see the previous video in this series for a detailed walkthrough of that. Moving a single part mesh is also fairly easy because it's straightforward dealing with just one thing at a time and using the movement and rotation tools is also straightforward. Moving multi-part meshes can be more complicated because you'll have more than one piece to worry about at the same time. They'll have to be moved in exactly the same way if you want them to end up in the same place. And if the two parts are not connected, like two shoulder pads, two armbands, two earrings, and so forth, it can be especially tricky using the movement and rotation tools because they do not affect meshes on both sides of the body in the same way. We're going to walk through three examples in order from easiest to hardest in terms of complexity. None of the ones we'll do today are difficult per se, but each one has some specific considerations. The easiest way to move a mesh is to mirror it exactly to the other side of the body, which is across the X axis or along one of the other axes. We covered this in the last video, but let's do a quick review here. Say I have this bag on one side of the body and I want to move it to the other side so it doesn't clip with something else I'm wearing on that side. Just right click on the mesh, select mirror and X axis. And that's it. All you have to do after that is re-weight paint. Similarly, you can duplicate a mesh first, then mirror it so that you end up with a copy on either side of the body, like a pauldron, for example. Right click, duplicate, give it a new name, and then right click on the new one, mirror on the X axis, and voila. Once again, be sure to re-weight paint or else it will not appear in the right place in the game. Refer back to the previous video for how to transfer the mirrored bone weights. Freely moving a mesh instead of just mirroring it is a little more difficult since you have to adjust the placement yourself. For this example, we are going to make an armband from the demo mod leg band. If you want to follow along, bring in any version of the demo pants that still have the leg band included. Then bring in the demo top so we have the body for reference. Go ahead and rename the leg band to arm band, then select it, click on the transform tool, and then use the colored arrows to move it up, the colored circles to rotate it, and swap around between them to get the band roughly positioned around the upper arm. Click and drag on the little black box in the middle of the tool to make the band smaller. It isn't going to fit very well in the arm, but that's fine. We will fix that in a bit. For now, just get it into the right place and make it small enough so there are no big gaps. Everyone probably has their own strategy for this sort of thing, but I find that it works best for me to start with the mesh pressed slightly into the body and then inflate it back out. Keep using the various different functions on the transform tool until you have the band positioned. I think it looks pretty good like this, so let's go with it. Now use the inflate tool to pull out parts of the mesh where needed. And then use the deflate tool if you need that as well. Also, don't forget about the Move Vertices brush 
if you need to line things up better. Please feel free to pause if you need a little more time if you're following along. Once you are happy with how your new armband looks, we need to re-weight paint it. Remember that you must always redo the weight painting when you move things around. It's probably a good idea to also clear all the bone weights first so that none of the old ones from the leg are still there. Go to the Bones tab, select everything in the list, right click, and delete from selected shapes. Then go back to the Meshes tab, right click on the body and set it as the reference. Then right click on the armband and copy bone weights. Default values here are fine. Next, let's check the posing on the Bones tab to see how it behaves. I'm going to select the left upper arm bone here in the drop down and move it out using the Y axis slider. If it stretches weirdly, you'll need to tweak the weights. This looks pretty good, but armbands tend to pick up spine weights that they don't need. When this happens, you may get this. If that happens, you can either manually reduce the weighting by selecting the spine bone and holding down Alt while brushing the armband. Or you can probably remove that bone entirely by right-clicking on it and choosing Delete from Selected Shapes. Tweak any other bone weights as needed so the band behaves nicely when the arm moves. When you are satisfied, export your armband as a new NIF. And if you want to add it into the game, you will need to change the partition, make a ground model, and add it as a new record into the plugin. To do all of that, please refer back to the appropriate videos in this series as needed. We did a pretty straightforward example with the armband. Now let's do a multi-part mesh by turning a bracelet into an anklet. It's pretty much the same, you just have to be careful to always manipulate the meshes together, or at least in precisely the same increments, or else your meshes won't be lined up correctly in the final product. Remember that, instead of the Transform tool, you can use the Movement and Rotation options in the right-click menu to work with precise values. It's definitely helpful in certain circumstances. If you want to follow along with this example, the files are in the Demo Mods Miscellaneous Downloads section. These are more of Petrovich's work, so please see the link to the original mod in the description and give Petrovich some love. You can manually download and add them to the appropriate folders in the Demo Mod, like this. Drag the bracelet NIF into Outfit Studio, and also bring in the UNP feet from the Demo Mod as a reference. Working with multi-part meshes is like doing a single mesh, except you'll have to remember at each step to have both meshes selected. In addition, if your mesh is actually made of two non-connected pieces, like if we were working with two bracelets, one on each arm, it can be really tricky to move and rotate. In these cases, I recommend separating the vertices so you actually have multiple meshes. Then you can use the movement and rotation menus that you access by right-clicking to track and write down the precise movement or rotation values that you use and apply those to the other mesh. Just remember that it's all relative to a central pivot point. So for movement, X will be positive to move to the right and negative to move to the left. And for rotation, X will keep the same sign but Y and Z will be opposite signs. We aren't going to do a whole of this with our mesh today, so I'll have to make a separate video about this. It's kind of hard to explain, and it can be really tricky to maneuver things the way you want if the two meshes are on opposite sides of the body. So for today, we're just going to work with one bracelet, and then we will mirror that to the other foot when we are done, so we'll end up with two anklets, one on each leg. To get started, Go ahead and select both the bracelet and bracelet gem meshes. Then use the transform tool again to move and rotate the meshes until they are in place around the ankle. Resize them as needed 
using the little black box in the middle of the tool. Once they are positioned, keep both meshes selected and use the inflate and deflate tool as needed to shape them around the ankle. Remember that you'll only see the vertices for the shape you selected last on the list, but all of the shapes that you selected will be affected. When that looks good, do the weight painting. Right-click on the feet and set as reference. While we're at it, let's rename these to anklet and anklet gem. Then select both of the anklet meshes, right-click and copy bone weights. These are tight fitting, so the defaults are fine. And then try a few poses in the bones tab to make sure the weight painting looks okay. You can see that we got some weird weights here. These are leftover arm and hand weights from when this was still a bracelet. So as I mentioned earlier, it's probably best practice to clear the bones from the mesh entirely before re-weighting it. At least if you move something far away from its original spot. Let me show you a neat little option here that we haven't looked at before. If we remove the arm and hand bones from the shape, we will probably have some vertices that are now unweighted, and we shouldn't export an outfit NIF with unweighted vertices. But we can see which ones are unweighted by coming up here to Shape and selecting Mask Weighted Vertices. Then we can manually paint the unmasked ones or just copy bone weights again to fix it. All right, now let's duplicate and mirror these meshes so we have two anklets, one on each leg. Right click on the mesh, select duplicate and give it a new name. Do the same for the other mesh. Then select both of the new meshes, right click and mirror on the X axis. To transfer mirrored bone weights, we need to first clear the bones from the mirrored side. Select the new shapes then select all the bones on the Bones tab, right-click and delete from selected shapes. Then we merge the matching meshes from each side. Select the right side anklet, right-click and choose Merge Geometry. Make sure it is being merged into the left side anklet and click OK. Do the same for the right side gem, merging it into the left side gem. Now let's symmetrize, and we have to do this for each one separately. Right click on the anklet, choose Symmetrize, and tick the bones box and then OK. Repeat for the gem mesh. Test out some poses and make sure things look good. Then export both meshes as a new NIF. If you want to use this mesh in Skyrim, you'll have to do some cleanup because Outfit Studio at least version 5.6.3, likes to add vertex colors and eye data to the BS tri-shape flags for some meshes. This can make your item appear black or invisible in the game. To fix it, open the NIF in NIF scope and check the vertex description line. If you have colors and eye data listed and the original NIF did not, then right click, select vertex flags. Click Yes, and then untick the box for Colors and Eye Data and hit Accept. Save the NIF, overwriting the old one. And then, as before, if you want to put this into the game, you'll need to decide on a partition, make a new ground model, or just use the bracelet one, and add them into the plugin as a new record. Refer back to previous videos in the series as needed. I won't cover weight painting in more detail here since we've done that several times together already. Please refer to videos 31 and 32 in this series for a walkthrough on how to do it and more tips and tricks. 
But I wanted to end this video with a final word on weight painting because it deserves extra emphasis. Any time you move meshes around, more than just a tiny bit, you'll need to redo the bone weights. If you don't, then it won't matter how you moved them in the NIF, they will still respond to the original bone weights and will probably not be where you want them to be on your character in Skyrim. You can redo weight painting for the entire outfit if you've made lots of changes, or you can just redo the part you moved. Mask any parts you do not want repainted, and then copy bone weights as shown in the previous weight painting videos. Well, that's the lowdown on moving meshes around on the body. Now that you aren't limited to keeping pieces in their original location, you can do even more fun stuff with mashups. So get out there and get outfitting. I'll see you again soon for the next video. Bye.